Welcome everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone that's here. We will begin shortly. My name is Lalita Marshall. I will be your MC for today. I am the Vice President of Advancement and Organizational Sustainability for the National Resource Center on Domestic Balance. And at this time, I ask that you please turn your attention to our interpretation team. Bienvenides. NRCDB está comprometida a crear espacios accesibles y multilingües. Por eso hoy estaremos ofreciendo Today we will be offering en español. Si necesita accesar interpretación, haga clic en el globo de interpretación y seleccione and that way you will be That's listening it. to our interpreters. Thank you. Welcome. NRCDB is committed to creating accessible and multilingual spaces. That is why today we will be offering interpretation services. If you need access to access interpretation in Spanish, click on the globe and select Spanish. For everybody else, please click on the globe and select English. Thank you. We'd like to review some brief housekeeping notes with you. We are recording the event and we'll share it through our website. We are offering a live caption feature for all of our events. You can access this feature by clicking on caption at the bottom of your screen. The Q&A feature provides an opportunity for attendees to enter questions for the presenters to respond. Remember, the public chat is open and visible to everyone participating in this webinar session. Please reach out to our staff if you are experiencing ongoing technical issues, but please note our limited capacity to address issues while the meeting is running. Before we turn the floor over to our presenters, we would like to make all participants aware of our wellness room. NRCDV has created a breakout room that will be available to you throughout the event. Because presenters will be discussing their experiences of racial trauma, this is meant to be a place of respite for those who may need to step away. NRCDV staff will be present in this space, sharing videos meant to soothe and heal. They are available to talk if that is requested. You can access this space at any time, except during our small group breakouts by clicking on the breakout room icon at the bottom of your screen. When the wellness room box pops up, hover over the number in the upper right hand corner and the word join should appear. And you can click that to join the wellness room. And we will also have this in the chat as well. Be aware that other participants can see who has visited the room. If you would like to anonymously step away, you can physically leave or close out of Zoom and rejoin at any point. Please remember to take care of yourself. Now, I ask that you join me in welcoming NRCDV's Vice President of Program Prevention and Social Change, Arlene Vassell. Thank you, Lalita, thank you. And on behalf of the National Resource Center on Domestic Violence, our entire staff and our board of directors, we wanna thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for making time to join us again for our third annual National Prevention Town Hall. Each year we feature a different region in the United States. And over the last two years, we featured the Southern and Midwest regions. Materials from those convenings are available at preventipv.org. This year's town hall titled Prevention is Radical, Lifting Power, Taking Risk, and Showing Up will feature approaches that are community driven, rooted in cultural strengths, and focused on relationship building, highlighting the Pacific Coast region. As a result of deliberate and purposeful planning, I wanna say 
thank you, special, special thank you to the thought leaders that pulled together collaboratively with NRCDV this amazing program that will take us on a magnificent, thought-provoking, and rewarding two-day journey to explore how our work is connected to and impacted by our current social and political reality and what part each of us must play in actualizing our collective liberation. The first step in opening our hearts, minds, and souls to receive all that our presenters will pour into us is believing that none of us is free unless all of us are free. My liberation is connected to your liberation and your liberation is connected to the person on the right and left of your virtual screen. And in this virtual world, that changes often. In order to achieve this collective liberation that we all desire and create a world free from violence, we must boldly and unapologetically confront and interrupt anti-Blackness and white supremacy in our movement. It means acknowledging the impact of colonialism, slavery, and other historical trauma on our hearts, practices, and structures. It requires us to live into our values individually, in relationship with others, and in our organization and larger movement. It's time. It's time for all of us, advocates, activists, and preventionists, to intentionally pivot our prevention work in bold and innovative ways, rejecting what divides us and imagining new ways. So again, thank you so much for making time to join us. I am looking forward to learning alongside each of you over the next two days. Like Dr. Maya Angelou taught us, do the best you can until you know better. Then when you know better, you do better. After this two-day convening, I am absolutely certain that we will all definitely know better in order to do better and actually be better. Before I turn the floor over to my colleague, Casey Keene, I would like to say a special thank you to all of NRCDV staff members who have been engaged in many parts <laughs> of this planning process. This has actually been an all hands on deck event for NRCDV. So again, thank you to all staff members for just creating this awesome, awesome event. And Casey, passing it over to you. Today is actually your delivery day. <laughs> you get to deliver your baby today. Thank you so much, Arlene, and welcome to everybody. This is such a great pleasure. I want to share that we are excited to be partnering with On the Right Mind for this town hall event. Um, on the Right Mind is a women of color owned small business that provides graphic recording and strategic illustration to organizations and movements working towards social justice and creating a world where we all thrive. You can see a link in the chat. Andre M. Medina will be capturing each session in today's program through live graphic illustration. Andre is a professional visual artist and translator of information into image. They have more than 12 years of experience working with consulting groups in small, medium, and large businesses and organizations, helping leaders to improve company operations and innovative processes. They are adept at developing visual, visuals and tools to optimize learning and love to work with local and global organizations who are seeking new ways of building a more sustainable and equitable world. We are thrilled to offer this to all of you as another avenue for engaging in this space and taking in the depth and richness of our conversations. To view their progress, you can look for Andre Medina in the participants list and either view or pin their art to your screen. We will also share their illustrations at the close of each session, and you will have the opportunity to reflect on them as you consider your action steps related to the content. These images will be finalized after the event and made available to all participants in both English 
and Spanish. Thank you. And now, please turn your attention to Tammy Truett Giroux, Executive Director of the Alaska Native Women's Resource Center. Good morning and thank you for having me. Um, I'm gonna do a land acknowledgement this morning. And for those that maybe aren't familiar with the land acknowledgements, it's really meant to be a formal statement that recognizes the unique and enduring relationships that exist between indigenous peoples and their traditional territories. And it, com excuse me, it commemorates the fact that indigenous people have not and cannot be erased. And so that's why it's become um, important to acknowledge that. And if you're not familiar with that, I encourage you to find out what traditional lands you may reside on. So this morning, for thousands of years, the Diné people of the Lower Tanana River have cared for this place and now known as Fairbanks, where I, I live and I work. I am from the land of the Degaton, but on the Yukon River. Their sustainable and symbiotic relationships with the animals, waters, and land has made Fairbanks what it is today. These relationships are embedded in the Diné language. Please place both feet on the ground wherever you are or wherever you live and think about who the indigenous ancestors may have been who cared for the land you all reside on today. As a step toward reconciliation, we acknowledge indigenous stewardship and histories. Land acknowledgement is about opening a space with gratefulness towards indigenous people. It is also about personal work and self-examination. When considering our relationship to the place we work or live, we must also consider our relationship to indigenous peoples. What knowledge do I have of the indigenous histories? What ongoing actions am I going to take to recognize the present indigenous experience? The work is ours to be done because everywhere in this country and others, there is and always will be indigenous land. Land acknowledgement is about recognizing and thanking indigenous people for their sustainable care and way of life in a place. Wherever we live, there are indigenous peoples who cared for the land, and that is the acknowledgement of their stewardship. Dogaden. Thank you, Tammy. Mm -hmm. Now we are pleased to pass the floor to your town hall weaver, Renee Kim. Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Renee Kim and my pronouns are she, her, and I am delighted, super delighted to be with each one of you today to celebrate the very emotional and joyful work that you do every day. I'm honored to be your town hall weaver. I was a little nervous about accepting the thing, but then uh, Casey told me there was no math or spreadsheets involved, and I was like, yeah, I can do that, and no tech skills involved. As I approach my sixth decade of life, I am happy to share with you some bits and pieces of my story and work path with you today. I want you to reflect individually and collectively to transform domestic violence agencies towards dismantling anti-Blackness, addressing honestly the overrepresentation of white cisgendered women in leadership, and the incredible amount of emotional and patronizing labor held by culturally specific programs and their staff to help enhance white-led programs. To be very honest with you, I was thinking about which story could I share with you that is most riveting from my time in domestic violence work? One of my favorite stories is when I uninstalled the internet. Yes, there was a time when there was no internet. And I know you may have been expecting a riveting client story, but this was the early 90s and we had just had the internet installed in our office and everyone was thrilled except for me because I didn't know what it was. 
until I learned that you can look for Beagle pictures. And so I was searching for all these Beagle pictures. And one day I left a website called Beagles on the Web. And this little box popped up and it asked me if I wanted to unstill. And I thought that meant be quiet or be still and end whatever it is that you're doing. So I clicked it and then it came back again. And I thought, that's odd. And it said, are you sure you want to instill? And I said, sure. So then I went back to filling up the hotline for the week. Meanwhile, my coworker, who was the children's program coordinator, um, had just finished group and came downstairs and yelled out, who uninstalled the internet? I want to play my video game. I thought nothing of her question, and I just kept working until I realized that install meant uninstall. Oopsie. So later that day, I began packing my stuff up to go home. And my coworker said, where do you think you're going? And I said, well, it's almost five o'clock. I'm going to go home. And she said, sit your ass down. You're not going anywhere until we call Netscape, which I guess was our internet provider or something. And then I said, uh, does this mean we're not going to happy hour? Yeah, we didn't go to happy hour. The next day, I came into the office and my boss left me a pamphlet about a training that she had signed me up for on how to navigate the internet. Before I ever started working in the domestic violence program, I didn't really have any goals or aspirations. I worked in retail and I just kind of floated through life. I was never encouraged by my family to obtain education or really do anything, maybe just work or maybe just get married. I was adopted from Korea and lived in a small town for most of my life. It seemed I was the only Asian girl around in almost every setting church, school, the playground. Church was the focus of my family. Attending a Christian school was one of the worst things that ever happened to me. I have to tell you that religion and spirituality have always been blurry for me for most of my life. At the Christian school, I had to memorize the Bible, the entire Bible, wear dresses every day, and endure kids calling me chink, Jap, goo, slant eye, or they would say, you look like Kunti Kinte from the show Roots with your wide nose and your big lips. I would think to myself, I'm not Black. Why are they making fun of me for being Black? I'm Korean, and I know that I'm ugly, so shut up already. The absolute meanest kids attended this school. In addition to all this name calling and days spent memorizing the Bible, I was also being sexually abused by an ordained minister. These experiences stayed with me throughout my life and I internalized the abuse and somehow made it my fault. I was a complete mess on the inside and just waiting to find my own brand of salvation. It was coming, but I just didn't know it yet. Then one day, I was laying on the couch, eating chips, doing one of my favorite things, watching the Oprah Winfrey show. And her guest on the show that day was Cher. If you don't know who Cher is, you should definitely find out. She had this picture of Cher and her husband, Sonny, and she said, so tell me about this picture. Cher said, well, this is me, or this is Sonny up here, and this is me down here. And she went on to talk about the power differential in their marriage. I thought, hmm, that sounds a lot like me. Then Oprah turned to the camera and said, what are you doing with your life? Are you ready to make change? Well, I leaped off the couch and I called the local community college and guess who answered the phone? Not Oprah, but an academic advisor that I had met with numerous times out of high school. And she said, Renee, are you really ready this time and I said yes I went to meet with her and she said well what do you want to be what do you want to do I said oh I'm going to be a secretary that's what my husband told me I should do and she looked at me and she said 
Hmm. Let's do some tests to see what other occupations you might be good at. I was stunned to get back the results. They were things like lawyer and teacher and counselor. And she said, you know, I really think you need to go get your bachelor's degree. So I ended up getting my bachelor's degree and I majored in social science because that was a degree that required no math above the 200 level. You might wonder how I landed my first job in domestic violence. Well, I was working at The Gap as a manager, and I was a little frustrated because I had just graduated from college, and one of the reasons to get out of retail was to go to college. Anyway, this person would come in the store. She's like, I'm going to hire you someday. You'd be awesome, you know, because you always ask me, uh, did you register to vote? You didn't, you don't ask me, do I want an ad on like a t-shirt? Then, like maybe a few days later, a few weeks later, she comes back and she's like, I've got this grant and we're going to hire you. I was like, okay, great. So I was hired as the administrative uh, coordinator. I did the dishes. I got the mail. I accepted really gross donations. And I did some light fundraising and grant writing. Then one day I was doing data entry by my boss, who was the executive director. And she said, you know, you would be a great executive director and I can teach you. I was so filled with wonder and amazement that she would say something like that to me. I began to take on more responsibility and became the full-time volunteer coordinator. As time moved on, I was asked to do Asian outreach and I had absolutely no idea what that meant or how that was gonna happen. Then I was told I could start an Asian women's support group. Again, I was like, how is that going to happen? I was really struggling to find my place in this work. And even though I was active in statewide women of color groups, it seemed all I did was leave those groups in tears and go home and eat a bunch of rice and drink beer. I felt invisible and left out. I felt many of the domestic violence agencies treated many of their clients the same way. If you were not white and cooperative, you were kicked out of shelter or you no longer had access to services. Why? Because you had a criminal record, you were black, you were loud, you did drugs, you spanked your kids and much more. My observations told me that this was not right, and it reminded me a lot of my childhood upbringing. The one good thing that happened at this DV agency is that I received a scholarship to the National Asian Women's Health Organization in San Francisco. I was a newly divorced woman, and I was thrilled to be at this conference because for the first time in my life, I saw many people that look just like me. I listened and watched the crowd and activists, listened and watched the crowd brought to tears by activist Janice Meritakani. I met Becky Misaki from the Asian Women's Shelter. Upon my return to Oregon, I began to look deeper at myself and the world around me. I never did become the director of the DV agency. In fact, I was yelled at for being a sellout and whitewashed. And guess what? I quit. It was one of the best days of my life. You'll hear more later. <laughs>